Hi, I'm Professor Jones, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to construct a confidence interval for mu. Mu is the population mean when sigma, which is the population standard deviation, is unknown. Now, if you are looking for um, when sigma is known, I do have another video on that, and it is a little bit different. It's important here that we know or we don't know sigma. Okay, and um, so you can check that out if you need to, but in this case, sigma is unknown. And I'll talk about why and why um, we're doing a confidence interval here. So let's look at this problem. It gives us eight days of high temperatures in October of 2016. This is from my hometown. This was a memorable summer for me. I was pregnant and it was hot. It was very, very hot and we live in the South, um, but it was still unusually hot for our area. So I was just curious, like what was the average high temperature in October of 2016? And I didn't want to look at all 31 days. I just wanted to look at a few days and use that to kind of come up with a range of what the high temperature might have been. Okay, so this is something that you can do with just data that you can gather pretty easily. Um, so that's what I did. I just gathered some data here, eight days of and what their high temperatures were. And we're going to use this. It tells us to estimate the average high temperature in October with 95% confidence. So that's what tells us we're building a confidence interval here. There's no way to do this without that confidence interval. Obviously, sigma is unknown here. It's not told to us anywhere that we have a standard deviation of the population. We're just given raw data here and that's and nothing else really except for the level of confidence. So sigma is unknown. Um, if sigma is known, it um, corresponds to the z distribution or the normal distribution and so it is different than when sigma is unknown. So sigma is unknown. And I'll um, give you that confidence interval formula. I'll use CI for confidence interval. Okay, so the formula for when sigma is unknown, confidence interval formula, is x bar minus t sub c s over the square root of n. And we are estimating mu here, which is this um, Greek small mu, okay, lowercase mu. And so I have it here as the variable, and I'm using these less than symbols to say it's bigger than this value and larger than this value. So you'll sometimes see the confidence interval written like this. You can also see it with a hyphen in between. And then you can also see it asking for the lower and upper boundaries on mu. And so if you're doing that, this is the lower boundary. Use a B and D for boundary. And this is the upper boundary. Okay. So again, we're looking for an estimate of all high temperatures in October of 2016, um, given just eight of them. Okay, and so we're using this formula for that. So we need the pieces of it. We need our x bar, our t sub c, our s, and our n. Okay, and we're just given raw data to find these pieces. And so the first thing you need to do is to take this data and either in your calculator or in Excel, um, find the mean or the average of this data set and its standard deviation. And it is a sample for that standard deviation. So I did that for you. And I found that the mean of this data is 80.4. So that's the average of these, this sample. And then the standard deviation of this data is 6.68. All right. And then n is the sample size. It's how many data points that we collect. So there are eight here. And so our n is eight. So now let's talk about how to find this t sub c. Since we don't know sigma, our data is no longer normally distributed, but it does fit something called the t-distribution, which is also referred to as the student's t-distribution, and I will link it down below. 
um, in the description. And in order to find T sub C, you need something called the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom, uh, abbreviated DF on that chart, is different depending on what you're looking for. We are looking for the mean. And so for us, our degrees of freedom is n minus 1. But it is different depending on what measure you're calculating and looking for, and so that's why we use degrees of freedom and not n. So we find our degrees of freedom, and it's going to be 8 minus 1, which is 7. Okay, and that's just used to find our t sub c. So we'll use the degrees of freedom of 7 and then a confidence level, and that's the 95%. So if you look at that table, you have degrees of freedom down the left-hand side, and then look at the top column, and it should one of those top columns should say C. That's your confidence level. So you're looking for a degrees of freedom of 7, so the 7 line, and then the 95% or 0.95 column. So wherever those intersect, that's going to be your T sub C. So you should find that to be... Um, 2.365 in that table. Again, that's from a chart that I've linked below using the degrees of freedom and the uh, confidence level of 95%. Okay, we have to use the T sub C when sigma is unknown, like it is here. All right, so we've got our pieces, so we just need to plug into this formula. So I'm going to write it here x bar, and I'm going to use a plus or minus here because if you notice these two pieces, the lower bound and upper bound, the only difference is the minus sign and the plus sign. So I'm going to do everything with the minus sign and then everything with the plus sign to find the lower and upper boundary. Okay, so 18.4 plus or minus this 2.365 is my T sub C. S is 6.68. And then n is 8. Remember that n is 8, so don't revert back to those degrees of freedom. It's just to go to that chart that you need that. Otherwise, n is 8. Okay, so I'm going to plug this into my calculator. I'm going to do it with a minus sign first to find the lower bound, and I got 74.18. I'm going to go ahead and put degrees Fahrenheit on that. And then my upper bound, when I use the plus sign, I get 86.6. So I can be 95% confident that the true average, the average of all days in October, um, at, was between the 74.18 and 86.6. Okay. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to comment down below. I try to get to those. If you're my student, then come find me. Okay, and um, like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want more of these or let me know what else you would like to see. I'd love to make some more of these videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in another one.